Yes, we've seen the OnePlus 10 Pro, but what if the company was doing another phone lineup that truly is designed to have it go back to its roots? Because yes, it seems that there is another OnePlus coming that's not the Nord that plans to bring the company back to what made it popular. Uh, we're already hearing about the iPhone SE Plus this year, but the specifications don't really make sense. And we have new details on what the future iPads might bring and uh, some big changes that uh, might also bring some interesting issues. I'm Jaime Rivera and uh, I just did the math here in Honduras alone. I have 87 t-shirts. Fine, I might need some help. This is Pocket Now Daily. The official news today begin with Garmin. Yes, the maker of the watch that I'm always wearing that you're asking about. And uh, even if we did see some new watches from them back at CES, the company pretty much just made my baby obsolete. They just announced the new Phoenix 7 series and their new Epix smartwatch. Uh, starting with the Phoenix, just like every update, we have a bevy of combinations mixed into the smaller 42mm 7S, the regular 47mm 7, and the larger 52mm 7X. Size options, all of these being focused on being the top of the line for outdoor activities and various choices of materials. Changes are mainly in features and the fact that we now have a touch screen, even if you can still navigate the old fashioned way with the buttons, which I actually prefer for sweaty workouts. If you go for the larger 7X model, that includes a flashlight feature, which pretty much mimics what you can currently do with your phone. Expect improved solar charging, GPS, antenna connectivity, more Sapphire options, and the typical high end price tag. Now, even if I've been a Phoenix user for two generations, the Epix catches my eye most because it brings pretty much most of these capabilities of the Phoenix, but on a more modern OLED display that we've seen Garmin trying out with their Venue and Vivo Active lineups. Even more impressive is that you get the same 16 day battery life with this new OLED screen as if you were using a regular Phoenix. You bet that I cannot wait for these review units. And for those of you debating the price, keep in mind that these are not just smartwatches. They are pretty much fitness computers that can do smartwatch functions for anyone that takes fitness seriously. Now let's shift gears onto Apple for the first time today and what we'll be getting with the next iPads. I know we started with a couple yesterday, but today we get some light on the others. Starting with the regular iPad, we have a new tweet from Dylan on the 10th generation iPad and what it might bring. According to him, this refresh will come towards the end of the year with the same 10.2 inch display, but now we have 5G, Bluetooth 5, Wi-Fi 6, and an A14 processor. Finally, he claims that this will be the last model to feature the big bezels and the home button design before we get a redesign in 2023. Now, moving on to the iPad Pro, we have a new report from 9to5Mac that goes along with what we covered last week. They are also claiming that Cupertino has been testing multiple prototypes with a glass back and wireless charging, but that the design might have been scrapped in favor of a glass logo with a MagSafe added to it for safety. And then this report adds mentions that the MagSafe technology would be faster than what we get on iPhones for obvious reasons reasons and that we also will be getting a larger battery. We're also hearing that the iPhone 13 like camera module might make it to the iPad Pro, but that doesn't necessarily mean we'll be getting more cameras, probably just the same design. And finally, this iPad Pro will reportedly bring a larger display than the current 12.9 inch model, and it would be powered by Apple's M2 chip, though more on that in a second. Right the second. We just needed to separate things a bit because uh, they are a separate topic. Let's keep talking about Apple and the Mac, but before we do so, a quick update on the iPhone SE that's a bit confusing. We have a new series of tweets from Ross Young that talk about Apple's upcoming budget phone. Ross mentions that the next SE model is rumored to be dubbed the iPhone SE plus 5G, but uh, where it gets weird is that once we talk about specs, we hear of a 4.7 inch LCD. That doesn't sound like a plus to me, but for anyone asking about that particular size, he mentions it, but as the iPhone SE 3, which is an entirely different phone with either a 5.7 or a 6.1 inch display with the 5.7 inch being more credible. 
But wait, on another tweet, he mentions that the Plus model is the one coming this year, while the SE3, which is actually the fourth generation, is coming in 2023 or 2024. Sadly, he doesn't provide any dates for this, but uh, I mean, let's go back to talking about Macs. According to a new tweet from Dylan, the current 13-inch M1 MacBook Pro will be replaced with another 14-inch model that'll be powered by an M2 chip in the second half of this year. Apparently, we can expect a slight price increase over the previous generation, and it'll come along with the redesigned MacBook Air. Dylan also mentions that it will bring the same design as the M1 Pro variant, and it'll also bring all of the ports we get with the most expensive devices. Not sure how I feel about the 13-inch Pro dying, because honestly, all I wanted on that computer was more ports, but we'll see. And finally, for the hottest news today, let's talk about OnePlus. And I know it's been a while since we've had them in the segment, and I think it has to do with how their recent moves haven't really remained true to what made them popular. Some say that uh, the hero lived long enough to become the villain, and uh, then we got the Nord, which wasn't really much of a return to its roots. But wait, it seems that there is more, sort of. For all of you disappointed that the Nord wasn't really the flagship killer that we wanted, it seems that there will be a course correction. According to a new leak from Digital Chat Station, OnePlus is working on a new smartphone focused on performance and gaming, and it'll be priced at around $315 to $473 in the Chinese market. Now, the reason we're saying this is a flagship killer is because it'll reportedly be powered by a flagship processor. But on an interesting twist, this might be their own self-developed chip. Of course, if that doesn't happen, it'll be the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 or the MediaTek Dimensity 9000 powering the show. Now, to keep the price down, they might cut some corners and things we're used to, like the camera department and other things like an IP rating like they did in the past, but we can expect a high quality display in return. We have no word on when we might be getting the smartphone, but in today's question, let us know. I mean, what do you think about OnePlus phones lately? And also, what do you think about the idea of the company doing a flagship killer again? Because honestly, in my case, I think it's necessary to get the company back to the virality it had because I'm sure they're selling more phones now with their Nord series going like really inexpensive, but that doesn't change the fact that their popularity is not the same. That's just me. Leave us a comment down below. We'd love to know your opinion. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. You can also follow us on social medias. Our extended coverage happens on Instagram and follow me on my personal handles to see me buy too many shirts, I know. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.